welcome back in. 518 is the time in the Prince Orthopedic Associates studio. Zach Gelb show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. Heath Evans from the NFL Network is going to join us in a few seconds. And I was just watching this video, actually, of Heath Evans, and it was unbelievable. This man bench pressed at 225 45 times. It was unbelievable. And here he comes right on cue, calling in from the NFL Network, the former NFL quarterback, and, of course, won a Super Bowl championship with the New Orleans Saints, and Heath Evans kind enough to hop on board with us on the Zach Gelb Show. Heath, what's happening, my friend? How are you? Oh, I'm good, buddy. You said uh, former NFL quarterback. I wish I was a quarterback. I'd take that paycheck over that fullback paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I said quarterback? You know I meant the fullback, obviously, but I guess, I guess I must be on something today. And I don't know what you're on, obviously, because 45 times, uh, 225, that's unbelievable, Heath. Well, it's a lot easier when you're not taking a beating on the field, too. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to eat right and uh, work out hard when you're not going out to practice field and uh, playing a 18-19 game uh, regular season and playoffs. So, uh, yeah, the uh, the body's been good to me post-retirement. I'll just say that. I was reading something today that said when you had your pro day, you did 30 reps at 225, and now you're doing more. Like, does that ever amaze you? And you're also doing it in a suit, too. Like, that's got to be tough doing a bench press in a suit. Well, I should have done about 36 or 37 as a rookie. They woke us up early, about 45 minutes early. This was back before the PC BS world we live in now. Uh, they didn't feed us breakfast. I got to do one warm-up set at 135. Every, all the players around me were grumbling and complaining. And, you know, so it was an empty belly. It was cold. Uh, we're in the underbellies of uh, the Indianapolis Colts uh, um, stadium there. It was just – they were just testing our mental toughness, you know, who was going to whine and complain and who was going to get under the bar. So um, I've definitely gotten stronger post-retirement. You know, I got stronger throughout the course of my NFL career until – about year seven or eight, you know, I think things plateaued, but, you know, injuries mount up and, you know, five years now to, to heal up and recover. Um, listen, if I've never been a, a drinker or a, a drug guy, so you take care of the body. It'll, it'll take care of you, I promise you. That combine experience, it's the most high-pressured interview basically in the world, I have to imagine, which how much 140 time can make you a first-round draft pick or can bury you in the fourth or fifth round. Your combine experience, when you look back on it, and obviously we talked about right now how a little bit of pressure there is on you right there, a lot of pressure. What advice would you give to someone that just recently and maybe in the future years is going through the combine experience and then also the pro day? Oh, I would I would probably hit them with the hard truth that it never gets any easier than the NFL Combine. I mean, from the Combine, you go to the team interviews where you're sitting, you know, they, they bring you in for visits, and you're one-on-one -on -one with a coaching staff for a day, for four hours, six hours, whatever it may be, you know, and then maybe, then maybe they draft you, and then after that you go to OTAs where you're mixed in with a whole bunch of grown men that already know the playbook, that have been there, done that. Um, I, I mean, I remember getting through my rookie year and looking back, like, why did I ever get nervous about the combine? It was shorts and T-shirt. Um, nobody was getting hurt. I wasn't going to miss a pass protection that got, you know, Brady or Breeze blown up. Um, I would try to, if, if I was coaching a young man, I would teach him, teach him to keep the combine in perspective. And, and listen, we've been running 40 since we were four. You know, we've been jumping since we were could walk. Uh, everything that we're demanded to do at the combine um, should be done with ease. You know, and, and I, I was never one to get anxious over anything that I've done hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. And that's kind of what running and jumping, those L drills, you got six weeks to master all those things. And then if you know football, you know football. So you sit down with the coaches, there's, there's nothing stressing is going to do about it. Otherwise, you know what you know, and you, you don't know what you don't know. Heath Evans with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. So let's get into a little free agency talk that's going to officially start tomorrow at four. As right now, we're in the legal tampering Period. A.J. Boye, the Eagles seem to be linked to him, according to Ed Warder. When you see A.J. Boye play, what type of player do you see, and do you think he's worth the big deal that will probably command tomorrow at four? Listen, the kid had a special year. I think you always got to look at systems, the players around him. You know, that Houston Texans defense, you start watching tape about week nine, week ten, and then – follow it through the year. You look what Romeo Cornell did to create pressure, especially middle pressure against every quarterback they played. I mean, you even look in the, the first half of the Patriots game in the playoffs. I mean, they had the Patriots offensive system completely thwarted up front and frustrated. And so you always look at how players benefit from what's going on around them, you know? And so I expected a lot out of that Philly defense last year that we didn't get. And so if you throw 
A.J. out there on a corner with no pass rush, he's going to struggle like most corners do. So um, I, I think he's a smart, tough guy. I think as the year went on, obviously he made a lot of plays for that Houston team, um, and I would expect him to do the same. But, listen, that's a position that so much, unless you're the elite Deion Sanders or the Revis in your prime, no one's trying to run with a, a wide receiver for, for three seconds or three and a half seconds. You just can't do it. So um, he's he's going to be a, a good piece um, if the defense is willing to play good around him. That's what I'd say. And that's not a knock on his skill set. That's just a knock on the position and what it takes to be good and have longevity at that position. The dilemma that the Eagles are in right now, and we'll see which way they're going to go starting tomorrow at four, is you know they have the quarterback, but now they got to get pieces around the quarterback on both the offensive side of the ball and then also on the defensive side of the ball. And you don't want to end up turning out to be an Indianapolis situation where you have luck but not much around him on both sides of the ball. The Eagles though, only have a limited amount of cap space, about $11, $12 million to spend. If they had to pick one, do you think they go wide receiver or cornerback when the free agency period commences tomorrow? You know, I, I still think – I mean – with what Shorty wants to do on defense, I, I I would say go offense, you know, and I might go offensive line instead of wide receiver. I'm, I'm a big believer of, if you're a good coach with play design and week to week scouting capabilities, where you can build an offensive system that needs to change every week to beat the opponent you're playing. Um, if you've got a good O line or a good O line coach, in in a young quarterback that we've seen has talent and ability and the ability to somewhat run the ball um that's your bread and butter for a young quarterback i I would give a young quarterback more time before i'd give him another weapon at wide receiver um that's that's old school thinking on my part um you know obviously um wentz might disagree with me and that's his prerogative but i'm big on last year when lane was healthy before the suspension um and jason peters and all the boys were lined up that was a good quality of line. You saw what one loss of Lane did for that offensive line throughout the course of him being gone. So I'm just big on protect protect your assets. And, and I think what we've seen, um, you know, from Carson is that if he has time, he's going to grow mentally. His vision is his vision. Uh, I was impressed with it for most of the part of the season. He struggled at times, but – um, I put a lot of this on coaching for the lackluster you know, aspect of what the Eagles suffered through last year. I'm always a big proponent of improving the offensive line play in the trenches, but here's the one time where I'm, I'm going to disagree with you just on that because I think the offensive line for future years, yes, they do got to find someone to replace Jason Peters, and if that means moving over Lane Johnson and finding someone else at the right tackle, so be it. But right now, that glaring need at wide receiver and also running back – they just don't have enough options. Uh, right now at wide receiver, Heath, it's only Jordan Matthews. And Jordan Matthews is a good player, not a great player. And that's why I think they have to go wide receiver, really. Well, and, and that's where, listen, I think create some cap space. I look at this, you know, the wide receiver pool and free agency. And I ask myself, who's a guy that I think you can know and, and, and trust? Well, I mean, I'm a big Brandon Marshall. He's gone. You, know, you look at Pierre Garçon, I think, you know, he's – either gone or in the in the process of being gone. Um, I, listen, I, I loved a lot of stuff that D. Jack brought to the table when he was there, but, you know, will that marriage ever work again? Um, you know, I'm just big on known commodities, you know? And, and so um, we've seen these teams with a lot of elite weapons at wide receiver and great DBs and all these pretty positions and had no O-line and D-line. Look at the Atlanta Falcons for years built totally wrong and couldn't get anything done. Scott Pioli gets there. They start putting emphasis on O-line, D-line, and um, you saw where they ended up this year. So um, we'll, we'll see how it works out. They definitely need help at the wide receiver position, though, for sure. Would you trade the 14th overall pick for Brandon Cooks? You know, I, I, listen, I, I think Cooks has done a, a lot of good things, but I think Cooks is still a wide receiver that benefited from the brilliance of Drew Brees. And so I'd say no. Um, I'm not sure Cooks is ready to come in and be a guy for that team and that system with that quarterback and that offensive staff that you're going to get the 14th pick value out of that right here and now. Is there still development he can make? Absolutely. Um, But it's like the Jimmy Graham trade. Everybody expected Jimmy Graham to go out to Seattle and be Jimmy Graham. Well, no, a lot of that, most of it had to do with number nine, and that was Drew Brees. And so we've seen that connection out in Seattle still be very, very lackluster. 
So things that people have gotten spoiled with what Cooksey does in New Orleans, you can't throw that type player into any other system and expect that type of production. It's just not how it works in this business. Heath Evans, let me give you a few other names. Just give me a yes or no if you think they'd be a good fit in Philly. Torrey Smith. I mean, he's a he's a he's a burner. I think he's a limited route runner. That, that's I'll say this: you got a big, strong arm, young quarterback. He'll help that quarterback, but he's not the type of wide receiver that Heath Evans, the GM or head coach, is looking for. Heath Evans, the GM. Do you take a flyer on Kenny Britt? Yeah, but the first day he gets there, I put him. I put him in the doghouse and let him know that I'm the boss and he's going <laughs> to do things my way, and it's going to be a very um, team friendly contract that gives me all the power to make sure he's working and he's mentally prepared to come to work every day. He showed that he can play the game at a high level this year consistently, but we've seen too much of the other nonsense where mentally he doesn't show up. It's a big body that can produce, but I think there's certain players that you have to kind of rule with an iron fist. How much money did you give Terrell Pryor? I want to know why everyone hates him. I like so him. I would say – no, no, I'm talking about teammates. You go back to Ohio yeah. State. Listen, we get to, you know, with the, the benefit in this business, we get to talk to a lot of guys. And listen, I've been around teammates that are quiet. I've been around teammates that can rub people the wrong way because you don't understand their personality. And so I, I don't know the young man. Um, I, I just – I don't want anything divisive in my organization. And is he a young man that's worked hard? Absolutely. Is it impressive what he's accomplished so far making that conversion? Absolutely. Does he have a long way to go? Absolutely. Um, can he do it? I believe so. I, I just I need to find out why people don't like him, and, and that and that that's a that's a big that's a big thing with me. How about Kenny Stills? I, I like a lot of what Kenny does. I need consistency. You know, Kenny 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 would be um, worth a nice contract that keeps him humble enough to keep grinding. You know, uh, Kenny hasn't arrived in any way. I think he's a talented player that can offer a team a lot of things at the wide receiver position. He's tough. He's a willing participant when he's asked to block. He's just, he's still just mentally, he's still just got to grow up, you know, which a lot of young players at his age do. Heath Evans with us right now. Let me throw out one more name before we talk about the Giants for just a brief second. Uh, Josh Gordon, I know that you're going to be wanting to be on more of the clean route, but Josh Gordon would be on his last chance maybe a one-year deal at the league minimum, and we still have to see uh, where he is from a health standpoint and then also uh, if the league's going to reinstate him. But if Josh Gordon does become available, will teams be willing to listen? I think so. I mean, God, the good Lord only made one of him. And um, I think there's enough owners uh, as well as head coaches and GMs that are willing to, I guess allow guys to suffer through those type of you know discretions and help them get better. You know, if I was the head coach, I'd bring them in, and I'd have a list of things that I demanded from them. But I'd ask them, I'd be like, hey, what are the things you're going to do to set up a system in place to keep you accountable? And if they weren't more extreme than the list that I have mapped out, um, I probably wouldn't touch them. But I, I like the young man; I've had the benefit to spend time with him. But he's constantly getting in his own way, and I hate to see him because he could be something special. He could rewrite some record books, but but he's he's got to make that choice himself, and I think he's going to need help along the way, so that's going to be the right organization to help him do that. Since we're on the topic of second chances, what Joe Mixon did was despicable. There's no place for it in the game, but you know if you're able to help a team, you're going to get another chance, even with the misogynistic act that he did commit. Today he runs a 4.43 at the pro day. Uh, when do you think the earliest Joe Mixon goes, and how would you approach that if you were a GM? That's um, that's a that's a tough one. You know, I, I am I'm, I'm grace and mercy all, all the way. Uh, there's certain acts where I believe you should be done, and if he pulls that stunt in the league, he he, he will be done. It's it's there's it's not this baseball three strikes you're out. It's one and you're done. Um, I. I think this, it's been two and a half years removed since the incident. Um, there's been no cases since. Um, I believe uh, the same thing that I said about Josh Gordon. If you sit down with a young man and there is a, a repentant mindset and a humble mindset that it seems to be with him, um, I, I think he'll get a chance, and deservedly so. Uh, but he's got to walk the straight and narrow because, you know, people can forgive the pot. They can forgive a lot of nonsense. But as soon as you put your hands on a woman, there's a bunch of grown men in our business that want to put their hands on you. Um, and, and it's just not um, – 
it's, it's I, I hate talking about this because I know there's people listening back. Like, oh, he's supporting Joe and he supports wife beating and spousal abuse and all that crap. And that couldn't be further from the truth. But I believe that the kids earned uh, the right to have an opportunity to win over GMs and head coaches with the right answers and the right mindset. I think it's a very fair answer. Before we let you run, Heath Evans, Brandon Marshall uh, signed today with the New York Giants, and Eli's going to try to go on one more run. You know they needed a wide receiver to complement Odell Beckham. When you evaluate the Giants, what is it going to take? Uh, we know they have a good defense, but what else is it going to take before we could start thinking about them being a Super Bowl contender again? Consistency on offense. I mean, that offense isn't that good. You know, I mean, it's just it's just the truth. I and mean, you can look at a whole bunch of different stuff that doesn't matter and be like, oh, yeah, this offense is real good. They're ranked eighth year and seventh year. But when push comes to shove, when it mattered, that, that, that offense was bad. And it was inconsistent at best. Offensive so, line Brent, stinks. Yeah, but there was a, I think there was a lot a lot more to it than just that, and I think some of it was coaching. You know, so we'll, we'll see. Um, that defense should 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 only get better. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see. But I, I love me some Brandon Marshall. They call him the machine for a reason. He's exactly that. He should make that team better day one. Well, my friend, you look great on the NFL Network. Whenever you could sit down in a suit and bench press at two twenty five forty five times and. We know you go about it the right way. Tell me before we let you go, though, about the New World Anti-Doping Supplement Agency that you're working with right now. Well, it's real simple. For 10 years, I was petrified to take anything off GNC or Vitamin Shop and so because you just never know what's in it. You know, you look at these labels, you can't read the half stuff in it. I've got parents all over the place saying, hey, what, what, what supplements can my kids take? Well, um, I've, I've created my own, InnovateAthlete.com. Um, for every athlete, listen, we, we sent it through the – most stringent testing, 273 banned substances has been tested for. It's got WADA approved on the side of the bottle, registered with the FDA. Um, I've done it the right way for every athlete, whether it's professionals or weekend warriors, male, female, um, innovate athlete. So it's I-N-N-O-V, the number eight, athlete.com. Uh, again, all WADA tested, approved, uh, the cleanest supplements on, on, the, on the market. And um, I'm glad to, uh, to be the owner of this and pushing it forward. Since you were talking about how much of a challenge it was for you to know what to take and what not to take, we saw something in Philadelphia last year with Lane Johnson who was basically blaming the app that the NFL does provide to check it. Uh, take us through a little bit more behind the scenes of what it's like for an athlete when it comes to determining, okay, do I take this supplement or not? Well, when you go into a GNC or a vitamin shop, you pick up a bottle and you list 15 different things, half of them you can't read, and then on the bottom it says this proprietary blend. Well, you don't know what's in someone's proprietary blend. And so on my labels, they're clean. So whether you're Elaine Johnson or a weekend warrior or the 16-year-old high school athlete, uh, my labels are spotless. They're clear. And, again, it, it's been substance tested, 273 banned substances through the Olympic Committee, not just uh, what the NFL tests for, but over and above the call of duty. And, um, listen, I didn't take anything other than protein shakes for, for 10 years when I was playing because you just don't know what's in it. And so I've, I've been able to – uh, give NFL players, NBA players, I mean, Olympic athletes, um, now a supplementation line that they can supplement their diet and their workouts with and, and have no fear, 100% of surety, that they'll never test positive for anything in it. And that's something I never had. I wish I did because it definitely helps. Um, and, and now these athletes have it. Heath, great stuff. Always love talking to you. It was fun to see you at the Super Bowl. And let me make sure I get this right. NFL, former NFL fullback, Heath Evans on the Zach Gelb Show. We appreciate it, Heath. That a boy. Thanks, buddy.